Hello, this is Professor Courtney Smith, and I'm going to give a brief overview of the Freytag Pyramid. The Freytag, Freytag Pyramid was developed by a man named Gustav Freytag, a German guy, uh, obviously from the name Gustav, right? Um, who did some studies of drama and short stories and realized that there was a structure that presented itself quite frequently over and over again, and he developed the Freytag Pyramid, which is a visual presentation of that structure. And the Freytag Pyramid shows us the structure of plot. Plot is the artistic arrangement of a sequence of events. Story is just the telling of a sequence, sequence of events. First this happened, then that happened. Whereas plot is the artistic arrangement. That means that it is deliberately arranged on purpose, um, deliberately on purpose, uh, to evoke a certain reaction um, or create a certain experience. So that's what the Freytag Pyramid is. It is it is the plotting of the plot. It is a visual presentation of that. So, um, and on the one side, as you can see over here, we have the uh, beginning of the pyramid. It goes rises up, excuse me, rises up, and then falls over here. This is also referred to as the inverted check mark. Generally, this side is considered to be shorter, um, but for visual purposes and for the purposes of this presentation, I had to do it this way. So the Freytag Pyramid begins with exposition. The exposition is usually at the beginning, um, and that in the exposition we learn who the characters are. The protagonist, uh, who is the hero or main character, doesn't necessarily mean that the he or she is a good person, just that that is the main character that the story revolves around. Also the antagonist is generally revealed, which is the villain or a first force working against the main character. It may not be necessarily be a person. Um, also the setting is revealed, that is where and when um, the story is taking place. That can be time of day, time in history, time of year. Um, location can be, uh, you know, is it the country, is it a city, is it in a particular room, a uh, particular place, a different world, that sort of thing. Also we receive background information uh, as well as previous action beyond the plot. An example would be in Hamlet. The the play actually begins with a visitation from the ghost. However, we learn um, that in previous action that's not revealed in the play, necessarily doesn't happen from the time period that the play begins, that the ghost has been, the father of Hamlet has been murdered. Um, also, it's, the exposition generally establishes the tone that the rest of the story will, will, will uh, keep, keep, in to keep in line with. Next on the um, the visual presentation, the Freytag, we have a presentation of problem. Um, some problem occurs which creates an unstable situation. Uh, this is the conflict uh, or the dramatic situation that develops in order for the story to play out. Next we have the rising action. This is the sequence of causally related events um, that lead up to the climax. Now the rising action, these events, first this happens, then that happens, but with more detail, and one, um, one event follows from the other. This leads to the climax, which is the technical climax, the prob where the problem is addressed. That is also known as the turning point in the story. All this pressure builds up here and comes to a head at the climax. And then next, we have the falling action. Once that problem is addressed, um, everything starts to come back down to a um, uh, where the problem is solved. And that is the, the dramatic climax comes after the falling action. The problem is solved, and we come to the resolution or, uh, or denouement.